what's going on how are you guys today beautiful day here in New York and you guys ask me a lot about some surgeries I've had whether it's LASIK double jaw even the gynecomastia and yeah I know it's a little bit hypocritical of me to have had this stuff done because I've always been against doctors hospitals medical stuff but and I've said this before I've never really had a problem with plastic surgeons or things that are done to correct modern problems. So yeah, ideally if we were on the proper diets growing up, we were all breastfed, all that stuff, yada, 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 healthy environment, we would not need this stuff. So, you know, I'm almost 30 now. I had LASIK in my early 20s. I had double jaw surgery when I was 24 and gynecomastia surgery a little bit after that. But, you know, there are people born with perfect vision. There are people born with perfect teeth and there are people born with normal looking body parts and you know for better or worse people are in different sorts of categories so you know when plastic surgeons do most procedures yeah a lot of it's not necessary but there are a lot of things that can be done to make people happier which ultimately lets them enjoy life more and I, I mean I do have some regrets from my surgeries but I would have done every single one of them all over again so with the double draw surgery stuff, I've done so many videos on it on my channel. I've gone very in depth. So if you guys do want to hear about the draw surgery stuff, just type Frank Tofano draw surgery. The gynecomastia, we did a video on it and I think I did an update on the surgery too. And in that video, I believe I said I probably wouldn't have gotten it done, but you know, you never know uh, until it's over with. So maybe I wouldn't have gotten that, but uh, the LASIK is something I did in my early 20s because uh, my eyes got so dry I couldn't wear contacts anymore. And I always wore glasses. So until I was like, I don't remember exactly when I had it, but 21, 22, I always wore glasses my whole entire life. And all my family wears glasses. Now I do regret something that happened during the LASIK eye surgery. And you guys have might have noticed I have a little bit of a wandering eye. But we'll talk about that towards the end. First, I want to explain to you guys what it is if you're not familiar with it. So um, if you have poor vision, and if you have like a thick enough cornea, if you qualify for the surgery, they basically take a laser and they can correct your vision so you can see normally. I actually went to, if not the best doctor at the time, who is Ken Modell. Modell, I'm not sure how to say his name. And uh, for the, some of you older school Yankee fans, uh, he did Bernie Williams eye surgery. So Bernie Williams is a famous outfielder ball player for the Yankees. He did his LASIK eye surgery. So yeah, obviously if he's going to do uh, the surgery on a professional athlete whose vision is very dependent on, uh, whose performance is very dependent on their vision, I, yeah, he's the go-to guy. And the surgery uh, was expensive at the time. I think it was 5,500 or 6,000. And compared to other LASIK procedures, especially now, that is a bit high, but you know, it's your vision. You don't really want to mess with it. So uh, we went down for a consultation. Uh, they tested my eyes. They said, one eye, the retina or whatever was a little thin, so they have to do a different procedure. And one of them is called PRK, which I had done on my right eye. And the other is called something else, but I don't remember the specific medical term. So the PRK, they just take a laser to your eye and they resurface it. The other one where they actually cut a flap in the eye and then they run a laser there and then put the flap back over. The flap surgery is a little bit safer from the perspective um, that it, it, it corrects the vision better. I'm not sure, but there, there's a reason they have to do different procedures on each eye. Uh, so you go down there one day, get one eye done, and then you go down there the second day to get the second eye done, you know, just to make sure nothing crazy happens. You know, just in case something happens to one eye, you still have one eye. So they do the procedure on separate days. That's pretty customary. Uh, it was pretty quick, you know, they give you some sort of like uh, calming thing, you lay down in the chair, they kind of clamp your head in, and, and the surgery wasn't too bad, you know, it didn't really feel anything, might be a little bit uncomfortable at first, uh, but went down there one day to the city, left, came back the next day, got it done, basically just, um, I think I had to wear like some special glasses for a little while, but everything was okay, and uh, I've really never been happier, being able to see is uh, obviously, compared to glasses, is, is so, so much better, but uh, the downside from that surgery, uh, which I don't, I mean, it, it's actually annoying enough that I, I almost want to go correct it and get another consultation, is, is the vision in my eyes has been different ever since that surgery. So like my, when I close my left eye, my right eye sees pretty far, pretty clear, and my left eye has 
you know, I mean, obviously excellent vision still compared to wearing glasses, but it's kind of blurry and I, I don't see the same. So I, don't, I think my left eye is wandering now and you guys might have noticed that a little bit because of the vision differences and my right eye is more focused. So, you know, maybe I will go down and see if I can get that corrected, but then the issue is, okay, can you actually do another procedure on just one eye? What happens if it works? What happens if they got to correct the other eye? It's just, it's like not that bad of an impediment on my current day-to-day -day activities that I really wanted to get it fixed, although I might go down there and see what they say because, um, the, you know, the wandering eye might get worse. You know, it's been getting a little bit worse over the past two years and it is a little bit annoying to, to have kind of different vision in each eye. But th that's, the, that's the only real negative from the surgery. If you qualify for LASIK and, and they do a lot of like funding and loan stuff where you can like pay per month, I, I think it's one of the best surgeries you can get, especially uh, if you've been wearing glasses most of your life. I really don't understand um, you know, but the amount of money you would spend on contacts or on glasses, you know, over the course of 10, 20, 30, 40 years um, would probably be about the same as LASIK surgery and especially with how much cheaper it is now. You know, as long as you go to a good surgeon, as long as you have decent medical access. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll get on top of that and, and see if I want to get it fixed, but um, I've just been uh, putting it off a lot lately. So maybe I'll schedule an appointment, I'll, I'll see what the doctor says, what their recommendations are because the surgery is supposed to apparently wear off. Like it's not supposed to last that long, but I don't know, my, my vision has been perfectly fine since. And I think that there are a lot of like environmental and life factors that cause natural degradation of vision that I don't really have because I live a pretty healthy diet and lifestyle. Yeah, I, I guess I'll touch a little bit on the jaw surgery and the gynecanastia surgery downsides too. So um, the only issue I had with the jaw surgery was that I had to get the metal plates taken out three years later and the swollen recovery stuff, the metal plates in my head, that, that was the only real complaint. And um, fr from an actual surgical perspective, I really don't think they, they could have done a much better job. I'm um, very satisfied with the results from the, you know, the physical, how your jaw moves to the actual aesthetic appearance. But you know, there are a lot of factors going into a double jaw surgery that a lot of doctors don't know about that, that you need to do to ensure that your bite stays correct and that your facial appearance looks good, whether it's having the proper mouth posture and tongue posture or eating a healthy diet. Um, but you know, with both of those surgeries, the LASIK surgery, as I said, one of the best doctors I went to, uh, the double draw surgery, uh, Dr. Alan Berman, I believe is his name, something Berman um, at, at Cornell. So literally like the best surgeon possible that does the most amount of procedures and has like the highest success rate out of all the doctors. And same thing with my gynecanastia surgery. I went to uh, Dr. Blau uh, in White Plains, who is arguably one of the best at what he does. So every single surgery I had done was, you know, the best of the best of the best. And it's a considerable amount of money for a lot of people, but if, if it's going to make you happier with your appearance and how you look and how you feel, I don't think there's anything more you can do. That's why I respect these plastic surgeons a lot. And um, I don't really have anything against them compared to the regular hospital medical profession. Although I will say, as I briefly mentioned earlier, there are a lot of plastic surgeons who are doing, you know, things that aren't really going to improve your appearance. So um, the reason most people need plastic surgery is because they're aging, they don't like the way they look, and what they're getting is usually just like a little cosmetic something that they think is going to um, make them look better. And in reality, it doesn't make much of a difference. But if you're eating really healthy, if you exercise, if you're 10, if you have a healthy body weight, if everything in your lifestyle is healthy, and uh, maybe I should do a whole separate video on this, but if, if you have facial features that are not similar to indigenous features, and, and we know what um, attractive people are supposed to look like, and if you can go from your features, which are not considered attractive, to an attractive feature, the more of those that you do, obviously, the better you're gonna look. But if, if you're kind of just like average across the board or you look fine, there's only so much. So, you know, obviously if you have like an underbite and you fix it to a normal bite, you're going to look a lot better. If you have, you know, glasses on and you now have contacts, you're going to look normal. You're not wearing glasses on your face. If you have like a weird chest appearance, if you have gynecomastia and then you get it. Fi so when a plastic surgery is done to correct or enhance an existing feature objectively, I think that's great, but you know, to each his own. Uh, so hopefully this gives you guys uh, some ideas and maybe if you guys want any help with any of this stuff to, to make yourself happier, 
uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach out to me. I'll put each of those doctors names in the uh, comments below. But uh, that's really it. Uh, and this is honestly long overdue video. I've been asked this question probably uh, dozens and dozens of times for years and years and years and years. So if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you guys can go to frank com to support me through all of my businesses. Maybe I'll eventually be able to move out of my parents' house. And if you guys are curious, um, my parents paid for the LASIK when I was younger. Um, the jaw surgery was covered by my insurance. And the gynecomastia surgery, I got a really big discount because I did the video on it for that guy. So... Um, realistically speaking, um, the, the jaw surgery I would have never been able to afford. Same with the kind of gynecomastia surgery.